Hi guys, welcome back to my vegan kitchen. I'm sorry, it's been a minute. Um, you know, whole pandemic, all that. Big brother, another pandemic. What are you gonna do? But I've got a really simple recipe for you today that I think that you're really going to like. Uh, my husband and I often go to the supermarket and we buy what we think is good bread <laughs> or what we thought was good bread at the bakery department of the supermarket. And you flip it over and you look at the ingredients and there are a million things in there that you can't pronounce. I don't like that. I like to know what's in my food. So today I've got a nice recipe that you can use for hot dog buns or you can use for hamburger buns or you can uh, put it in a loaf pan and make it into sandwich bread and slice it that way and it's super simple and all of the ingredients you probably already have at home so we're i'm doing mine in the kitchen aid today but you don't have to do it in the kitchen aid you can definitely just do this in a bowl it's going to be a little bit more work i'm a little bit tired so i'm going to let my kitchen aid do it for me but um, let's get started. Over here I have my um, <clears throat> all-purpose flour. I usually buy this um, in bulk. I buy a 50 pound bag at a time and I get food grade buckets from the home store like uh, Lowe's. I think it was Lowe's or no, it was Home Depot that we got the food buckets at. And you get the uh, tops that seal completely and you're good to go with that. I use probably about 100 pounds of flour a year for a big family, so, well, big eaters. <laughs> and I do make a lot of bread. So we're gonna get started by, um, it's a lot cheaper when you buy it in bulk and you don't have to look at home from the store because I have it delivered. We're gonna put in three cups of this uh, flour. I guess it's all purpose flour. It's not any special bread flour or anything like that. So we're gonna, the thing is, you don't want the dough to be too dry. You wanna err on the side of wet dough because it's inevitably much, much easier to add flour and get the right consistency than it is to add moisture to an already tight dough. So that's why we're starting with three cups of the flour. If you don't put any salt in here, it's going to taste like paste. So you want to flavor your dough and use a good quality salt. Please don't use those ones from the supermarket that are like, you know, decimated. They like process it to nothing. I like to use a nice um, sea salt. This is a Celtic sea salt. So that's in there. One teaspoon. Don't worry. All of the measurements are going to be in the info box below for the, for the whole recipe. Again, in bulk, I like to buy my yeast in bulk. I used to buy, when we when I was first married, I used to buy those little three packets of the yeast at the store. And I made so much bread that they ended up being so expensive. So then I graduated to the little jar of yeast, which is probably like five or six dollars. Sam's Club is where it's at, kids. I'm sure Costco has it too and BJ's. I buy the bulk thing. Probably lasts me for the year and it's four dollars and change crazy how cheap it is when you buy it in bulk so i like to use two tablespoons of that it's probably a little oh sorry that's one tablespoon <laughs> i like to use one tablespoon of that all right now since this is a white bread and not like an italian bread instead of the water we're going to be using a non-dairy milk so i'm using this beautiful oatly full fat milk but I think any non-dairy milk would be really good, but I just really love the consistency of this. So we're gonna start off by putting in one and a quarter cups. And yeah, my thing got broken at the top. So it's <laughs> I'm just full of problems today, what can I say? All right, so that's one. And I'm gonna eyeball this because you're gonna see, you're gonna have to adjust this no matter what. You can't just put all these ingredients in here and expect it to come out perfect every single time because believe it or not, the humidity has a lot to do with the success of this and your ability to adjust the dough accordingly is very key. 
Also, I like to add a little bit of Evu, just some nice organic extra virgin olive oil, probably about a tablespoon. Now we're gonna take this over to the mixer with dough hook on and mix it up. A lot of people like to use their paddle first and then the dough hook, but I am extremely lazy and I don't wanna to have to wash both of them, so I just do the dough hook all the way. <laughs> so we're gonna get this started. Don't turn it on too fast at first because poof, you don't want it to go everywhere. All right, I'm gonna stop it right here and show you guys. This dough is extremely dry today. So we're gonna add another two tablespoons. If, you had, if I had let this go and mix it completely, it would have uh, ended up being a very hard ball of dough. And that's very difficult to get the moisture back into. So I'm going to add just um, two tablespoons of milk here. Very not carefully measured. And we're going to continue. I still feel like it's a little bit too dry. So I'm going to add another two tablespoons. You have to remember the less tight your dough is, and by tight I mean like dry and compact, the, the less, the more it's going to rise when it's, you know, wetter. And you want it to be light and fluffy. This should do it. So you can see it's nice and moist. I'm going to use my spatula, sc scrape down the sides, scrape this off the dough hook, and I'm gonna let I'm gonna put the uh, machine back on and let this mix for about three to four minutes. All right, guys, there it is. Uh, it's all mixed up. I scraped it off the hook. I took the hook off and um, scraped down the sides any residual that was on the sides. I'm just gonna cover it with a damp dish towel and let it sit until it doubles in size. Probably about an hour. All right guys, my dough is ready to go. It's been sitting for about an hour. It's puffed up pretty nicely. Sometimes I like to have the dough super loose. Today I'm doing it a little bit firmer. It's a little bit easier to work with. You get more rise when it's wetter, but it might be a little bit difficult if you're new to bread baking to handle it because it sticks to everything. So I've got my board over here. I'm just using a cutting board that I use. I could even just put it on this table, but sometimes I do it on parchment paper even. Put enough flour down so you're not going to be sticking. And then uh, just scrape your dough out of the bowl. Gently, you don't want to um, give up too much of the volume that you've already gotten. Let's hope it comes out. <laughs> Whoops. Nope, it's gonna it's gonna um, be a pain in the butt today. Breaching. Let go! <laughs> it's crowning. Was it a breech birth? Yes. Probably. There you go. Alright, make sure you get all your dough out. There's a little bit left in there. Okay. That's good enough. Alright, so here you go. We're going to sprinkle some more flour on the top because we don't want this sticking. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna knead it. I'm just gonna press it into a rectangle shape. If you bake a lot of bread, I would suggest that you guys invest in a dough scraper. It makes life a lot easier. Uh, it's good for handling the dough. And it's also good for making cuts in the dough. Not fancy cuts, but like shaping cuts. Like we're going to take this and we're going to um, 
divide it into eight equal portions because we're gonna make eight hot dog buns with this. So I'm gonna go down the middle first because that's the easiest way to do it. Then the middle of that one. Put that one aside, we'll just work with these right now. Then the middle of this one. And yeah, it's not completely the same because this one had like a little curve on it, but it's okay. All right, so what I like to do when I do the hot dog buns is I like to make it a little fancy. So I've got my pan over here with my parchment paper in it already. I like to stretch this out and then I just like to twist it up like this. You can come with me. <laughs> we'll add you to this one. All right, so I'm gonna um, twist up all my hot dog buns on this pan, and I'm going to have them not sticking together. I'm just gonna, you know what? Let me just get them all on the pan, then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Voila. <laughs> I've got all my uh, hot dog buns lined up. There's a little bit of space in between each of them. I usually take my leftover flour and I just uh, sprinkle it over the top. You don't want to do it, you know, you don't want to make a snowstorm over it, but you just want to make sure that most of it goes in between so that these don't stick together. We're going to let these rise in the oven with it off <laughs> just so that it's out of, you know, draft or dog situation, whatever. We're just going to leave it in there for in between half an hour to an hour, and then we're going to be ready to bake. All right, guys, it's about 45 minutes later. These have puffed up quite nicely. The dogs are very excited right now. We just got back. I trimmed the parchment paper around so that it wouldn't catch fire because in case you didn't realize, you're not supposed to use it in a toaster oven. So uh, these are going in at 375 for 30 minutes. And here we go. Bye. All right, these are all cooled off. Uh, they've been out of the oven for a couple hours. I've started slicing some of them. I find like they're easier to slice when they're in the pan still. So I just take a nice sharp knife and I just go right down the center like that. The outside is a little bit crusty, so this is nice. This is for like a foot long. Right? And you just, uh, they should come apart pretty easily. But you could eat it like a breadstick too. You don't have to cut it even. But you can make it any shape that you want. That's like such a nice hot dog bun. We had these the other day at my mom's house for dinner with uh, carrot hot dogs. And they were absolutely delicious. So <laughs> I'm going to massacre this one right now. There you have it. I hope you, um, I hope you give this a try because it's super simple. You'll know exactly what's in your bread when you make it yourself. And it really wasn't uh, difficult at all. So I hope you give it a shot. Subscribe for more. Smash the like button if you like this video. And hit the bell to be notified when a video, when a new video goes up. So thanks for watching and until next time, much love.